But God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us all to eternal life. Let us confess our sins, impenitence of the faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandment. We live in love and peace with all. Let's say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have yes. sinned against Thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all this past. And grant that we may serve thee in the news of life to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As a forgiven people, let's stand up, say those words of joy and glory. <laughs> Glory be to God, our and in earth, peace, good will is all to men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, you have the God and Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Now that takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sits at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only art Christ, with the Holy Ghost, our <coughs> most time, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We call it for this third Sunday before Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and afflictions of the sinful, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of this world, our hearts may be surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit to hear our Bible readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when he comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruits of his doings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 20. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you? that there is no resurrection of the dead. 
But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God, that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so, be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. This is the word of the Lord. I am speaking to God. Our graduate here this morning is here number 391. Bless our appearance. It is for the folding coming gospel week. It stands. <laughs> stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those who are troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all in the crowd were trying to touch him. For power came out from him, and he healed <coughs> all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they ex exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For, what is, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
<coughs> I pray that I speak and you may hear in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Half full or half empty? I wonder, you, are, are you an optimist or a pessimist? An optimist, of course, being someone who, as my dictionary puts it, um, is hopeful, a great Christian virtue, and confident about the future. A pessimist, on the other hand, is one who believes the worst aspect of things and holds that the worst will happen in any given situation. This surely is the very antithesis of what people of faith are meant to hold, isn't it? These two extremes of optimism and pessimism are best illustrated by the maxim Given a glass containing a fluid of 50% of its capacity, an optimist would describe the glass as um, half full, and a pessimist would describe it as half empty. So which are you? And given we are in church, which of these, the optimist or the pessimist, is naturally suited to the life of faith? I guess the obvious and more hopeful answer is that we are optimistic. We're optimistic we are, we are saved. Although there may be many sufferings ahead, come what may, we have a direct personal access to salvation by the atoning sacrifice of Christ, and thereby and therein eternal life through him. So typified by that great evangelical mantra, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. What? It's an optimistic notion. Great. The glass is indeed half full. Oh, overweight. We also have the other evangelical favourite, John 14, 6. No one comes to the Father except, except through me. Somewhat more limiting. And of course, there's sin, isn't there? For the evangelical sin is an act, something we inevitably do. Through the inheritance of Adam and all humans, we have a proclivity to commit sinful acts. Indeed, that's why we confess. We need saving. We need rescuing. And so therein, we've encountered the pessimism of the Reformed tradition. The glass is half empty again. As, as I'm in the pulpit today and wearing my robes, we can look into the Catholic tradition. We all perhaps find the unalloyed optimism um, there that the true followers of Christ must surely emulate. We have Matthew 16, 18. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Hooray! From this, we have the uplifting majesty of our church, wherein salvation is given through faith, mediated through the sacraments, seven, of course, and personal acts exemplified by the saints, St. Pancras most certainly included. What confidence, what joy, what optimism. The gate, and again, the glass is half full. Oh, but wait, does that sin thing again? Slightly different nuance here. For the Catholic tradition, original sin is the, the guilt of disobedience to God, passed on from Adam and Eve and to all subsequent generations. So sin is not something we do, it's a state, a condition in which all human find, humans find themselves, even in infants, are guilty form from conception. Here too, we have a de depressing dollop of pessimism, clouding our view from the dizzy height of the universal church. Oh, the glass is half empty again. Turning to today's readings, we seem to find no relief, relief from our dilemma. All three readings have a similar optimistic, pessimistic tension. Jeremiah prophesies to Israel about the glories of trusting in God. We will be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots into the stream. We shall not fear, therefore, when heat comes, our leaves will stay shiny and green, and the year of drought. We won't be anxious. We will not call and cease to bear fruit. Hey, glass half full. Somewhat depressing then, because in the very same breath, the very same section, we seem all too likely to be like a shrub instead, like a shrub in the desert. We should not see when relief comes. We shall live in parched places and of the wilderness, in the, inhab in, on the inhabited salt marsh. Oh dear, glass half empty. Paul, too, offers this tension. We either wholeheartedly believe in the resurrection, glass half full, or our preaching is useless, and so is our faith, and we are all wasting our time, glass half empty. Even the Gospels, Sermon on the Plain, unlike Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount, adds an equal number of woes, glass half empty, to blessings, glass half full. 
Perhaps then this is as it's meant to be. Optimism is not to be unquestioningly embraced, nor is pessimism unhesitatingly shunned. The lesson is perhaps that both are to be mentioned in the same breath. Each is the appropriate counterpoint to the other. No prophecy or doctrine or creed or denomination is complete without both optimistic pessimism or pessimistic optimism held in tension. Jeremiah, Paul and Jesus put optimism and pessimism, blessings and woes in the same breath because that is where they belong. Whether the evangelical minds, mindset is optimistic pessimism and the Catholic mindset is pessimistic optimism, I should leave to our conversations at the church door. In truth, both denominations exhibit the same balance seen in today's readings. To return to the question which, <clears throat> with which we started, the optimist or the pessimist, the glass half full person, the glass half empty, empty person, which is more naturally suited to the life of faith? It is important to note the condition of the glass remains unchanged. The only difference is within the observer's perception, a perception which is ephemeral, changing day by day, moment by moment, event by event, Blind optimism is as overbearing as blind pessimism is disheartening. We are called, rather, to think and pray about our faith continually. Our readings today, with their contrasts, indicate it is unwise to lean toward, to invite only prophetic blessings, whilst shining prophetic woes. Both are declarations of the divine mind, and we favour one over the other at our peril. Woe and blessing, camaraderie at the soup kitchen, joy at funerals, tears at weddings, the cross and the empty tomb, all have their place and indeed are inseparable elements of the full life of faith we are all called to lead. We are to accept both as such, accept that woe and blessing are bound together as we of faith are bound to our Lord who is always with us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
this body of believers, your hands, your arms, your feet, your heart on earth. Be with us this week as we step out in your name. Void up by your word and second. May we be your presence in the communities we serve, our workplaces, our homes, our streets, the shops, the toughest societies of which we are upon. Lord, work through us. May we be your church this week. Help us be effective ministers of your gospel, wherever we may find ourselves. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord, hear us. Lord, we lift before you all communities of which we are a part. Beyond brokenness and division, Lord, there is so often indifference. Indifference to the suffering of us others, indifference to the news on the television, indifference to the need, indifference to your word and sacrament, indifference to your gospel. We ask for your presence to be in those communities, as we already prayed for us and by your direct intervention of your Holy Spirit. That these communities may know your healing and difference may be broken by the ability to hear, the ability to act, and love says on you. We deeply lift before you the communities which are close in this parish of Shepherdswell, Coldwell, Barfaston, Aethorn, Elvington, Whitfield, Walsh. Lord in your mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We lift before you those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, especially at this time of the pandemic, even as it lifts. We lift before you those who are burdened by angst and worry about the current pandemic. Send a healing mouth upon We also lift before you those who are suffering from chronic illnesses, whose pain is not lifted from them. And they know the presence in their lives of the only true healer, which is you. In the moment of silence, we bring before you their names. Lord, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Lord, we bring before you those who have walked this earthly journey with us and now rest with you. Those who are recent memory. Those whose handiwork we can see still around our homes. Whose hat is still on the peg. Whose need work still holds up the fabric of our lives. And those who are distant men whose names are but faded letters on stones around this church and pictures in the corners of our rooms. Known and loved for eternity by you. We thank you that we are surrounded by such a gravity, greater cloud of mist, cloud of witnesses as we journey on. In the moment of silence, we bring before you those who are close to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, grace to hear us. And lastly, Lord, we bring before you ourselves, our inner selves, our whole selves. Be with us. Be within every fibre of our being. Be with us in all our actions. Be within our, all our thoughts. Be us within within and without. And make us your disciples this week.
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come, please stand. We come to the point of the service where perhaps our division caused by COVID is uh, most keenly felt. Uh, we are, although we are not wearing masks, or wearing the mask is now optional, um, we are still discouraged from uh, exchanging the hugs and kisses which we are used to do in the past. Perhaps some of the introvert nature might be relieved of that fact. But nonetheless, we are a community under the banner of Christ. Uh, we are all one in, in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith. As the promise of the Spirit of peace, the peace of the Lord will be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Now, next hymn is 376 by Herman Pedersen. See that else.
church door. We'll now be coming to the altar rail to, uh, uh, to partake in the sacrament. Um, it will be in two parts at once. I'll be tinting the, the wafers with wine, so we'll be taking uh, just the bread and tinting with wine this morning. Um, if you wish to take the sacrament, please come to the altar rail. If you do not wish to come to take the sacrament, please come to the altar rail anyway. Uh, Offer the words of God's blessing. Over. Over. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and right so to do. It is right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thy only Son, our Lord. For he is thy living word. Through him thou hast created all things from the beginning and fashioned us in thine own image. <coughs> Through him thou didst redeem us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman, to die upon the cross and to raise again for us. Through him thou hast made us a people for thine own possession, exalting him to thy right hand on high and sending forth through him by holy and life-giving spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the hearts. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, as we follow his example and obey his command, granted by the power of thy Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and his blood, but the same that he was betrayed took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he gave a thank to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ thy Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of thy divine majesty. When you ask by the Holy Spirit, inspire us with thy love, and unite us in the body of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for confidence as our Saviour has taught us. We sit on the altar pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, take us away in the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that I shall shut up my mind, but speak the word of Blessing God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, people in our hearts. Amen. Holy and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep you eternal life. Amen. Or the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep you in eternal life. Or the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep you in eternal life. Or the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep you in eternal life. For the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep you in eternal life. For the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep you in eternal life. For the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep you in eternal life.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we must heartily thank thee that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate, in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. And they're also heirs to the hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee in the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank thee for feeding us with the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer thee our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of thy Spirit to live and work to thy praise and glory. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you, and may you always. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is hymn number 137. <clears throat> Thank you. 